In this question, we're doing um, question four of the January 2013 Decision 1 paper. It's on Dijkstra's algorithm. So here it is. So here's a, a network, and it asks to start off with a common definition. What is the definition of a path? I always find it helpful to draw a path. Let's, for example, draw this path here. That's certainly a path. Let's just describe what it does for part A. A path is a finite sequence of nodes or vertices, whatever word you want to use for these. So in this case, it's S, B, D, F. Finite means there are a certain number of them. There is a number of them, not infinite. They're, they don't go on forever. Okay, so finite sequence of vertices. Okay, and each vertex, each node, let's say, is the endpoint of one uh, edge or arc, one arc, and the start of another arc. So here, B turns out to be the end of the arc SB, but also the start of the arc BD. And the one key thing about it that you need to get in as well, I'll write this in a different color, and a path has no cycles. Okay, um, it can it can't come back at itself. It can't revisit, or you can say or revisit a node. It can't come back to a node it's previously gone to. So, for example, that wouldn't be a path. So here to here to here to here to here wouldn't be a path because we've got a cycle and it's revisited D. Okay, so that's a path. You have to learn that def definition. Okay, so let's rub that out. Okay, it says figure four represents a network of canals and uh, the length in miles of a corresponding canal. Use Dijkstra's to find the shortest a route from S to T. And they give you a Dijkstra um, figure in your working. Okay, so let's have a go with this one. So firstly, um, this is the first one we label and it is zero distance away from the starting point because you're starting here. And you branch out from the one you've just labeled. You can get to A in 14, you can get to B in five, and you can get to C in 12. And you look at all the ones you've temporarily labeled, you find the shortest, which is B. You now permanently label that, the second thing you've labeled, and it has a five there. Okay, and now you branch out from the one you've currently labeled. So five, Add A is 13, which is better than 14, so you write 13. And 5 and 22 is actually 27. There's nowhere else you can branch out from B. So we look at all our temporary labels and we find the smallest, which is here. We call that our third one and we permanently label it 12. Now we're going to branch out from here. We add 13 and we get 25, which is better than 27. And we add 25 to 12 and we get 37. They're the only two I can branch out with. I look at everything temporary labeled, 13, 25, and 37. That's my smallest, so it's the fourth one I permanently label with value 13. Now I'm gonna branch out from eight. I add 18 and I get myself 31. I add 11 and I get myself 24, which is the best yet. And so I label that 24. I can't branch out anywhere from there. I look at these three and I pick the shortest, which is this one. So I label that the fifth one, 24. Now I branch out from here. I could go up to here in 29, which is better. Or I could go down to here in 32, which is better. I could also go across to here in 18, which is actually equal to uh, 42. And that's everywhere I can go. So I look at my temporary. That's the smallest, the sixth one with a 29. Then I branch out from here. 29 at 12 is actually equal to 41, which is best. It's the only way I can branch out. I look at 41 and 32. This is best. So this is going to be my seventh with 32. And 32 at eight is equal to 40 which is the best yet, 
So that's my eighth label at 40. And I am done. There's my Dijkstra complete. So far as actually fill out my Dijkstra's um, working, it says use Dijkstra's to find the shortest path from S to T, state the path and its length. So I've still got some work to do. So what I'm going to do, if you don't mind, I'm going to group this together. And I'm just, just going to make it slightly smaller. And I'm going to find my path. Now I find my path by going backwards. Okay, so here I at T, I start at T. Okay, and 40, how do I get back here? 40 um, take away 8 is equal to 32. Therefore, I know it must be ET is my path here because that's the only one that works. Now I'm at, uh, when I'm at E here, I can do 32 take away 8 which is equal to 24, so I know DE must be in my path. So DE is included here. And when I'm at D, I'm at 24. If I take away 11, I get 13, so I know that AD must be in my path. So AD must be in my path. And if I keep going, I'm now at A, I'm at 13, and I want to. T if I take away the 8, I get 5, so I know that A, B uh, is in my path, which is this one here. And lastly, I know that when I'm at B, if I do 5, take away 5, I get 0, so S, B must be in my path here. So therefore, let's state the path. The, the path is therefore, clearly, you can read it forwards now. S, B, S to B to A to D to E and to T. And it's got length 40. And don't forget the units. What we're dealing with in this question, we're dealing with length in miles. So the answer is 40 miles. And this is the answer to part B. And you must show these workings here. And so we've done part A and part B. Now the next part, it asks us uh, for part C, write down the length of the shortest path from S to F. So for part C, we want to get from S to F. Um, so how, how on earth would we get from S to F in the quickest? Well, we can just do this really by trial and error. We know the shortest path to D is the 5, uh, the 8, the 11, which is equal to 24. And uh, 24 plus the 5 would be equal to 29. So one option would be this one here, which would get us 29. The other option would be to do 14 and 18, which is more than 29. So therefore, how do we get from S to F? I would go S to B to A to D to F. And we said that would be equal to 24 plus 5, which is 29 miles. Um, and so try it up here, but you realise that's bigger. No, nothing down here can get you there quicker because you'd have to go through, uh, you'd have to go around the houses or through D to get there. And the shortest way to D is 24. The canal represented by RKB will be closed for dredging. Find the shortest path from S to D, avoiding AB. So go back to the picture here. Um, I'm just going to rub this out and rub this out. So we, we have to avoid here, it says, we have to avoid AB. So what we're not allowed to do is go along AB. This thing here is totally out of, out of bounds. Let's do part D separately. If we can't go along here, we've just got to think of the different ways to get from S to T, avoiding here. We could think about going up round here. If we add all these up, I think we get 44. If we get all the way around here, we would get... Um, 45 and it's not one of those so it looks to me like it's going to be through D what's the quickest way to get through D well I could go along here to 5 and then along to 22 and taking away the 8 and 11 so that would add that would take away 19 these two but add 22 add an extra 3 so that would be 43 or I could be dead clever and go up here 14 and just down here 11 which would be 25 versus the 27, uh, sorry, versus the uh, here, here, and here, which actually adds up to um, 20, 
4. So we're only adding one extra by doing that. So actually it'd be 41. So the path actually would be S to A to D to E and to T, and that would be 41 miles. The only way to get these questions is just by trial and error, really. Checking all the different options, seeing which one uh, gives you the smallest number. And we're done for this question here. We've avoided A, B in 41 miles and we're done.